death is the long-awaited visitor. He will visit every one of us. Every son of Adam will be visited by him. The reality that no human being can escape who already started his journey. So always keep your mind preoccupied with the remembrance of death. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm Isa Washington and here to open this session, International Islamic Conference on Peace, hosted by IRF Foundation Peace TV and Dr. Zakir Naik. I would like to now call to the stage our presenter. His name is Sheikh Salam Al Amri. I'm pretty sure you all know him. Inshallah, Sheikh Salam Al Amri, would you please join us on stage? Sheikh Salam Al Amri will be speaking on the topic, The Long Awaited Visitor, Death. I'll give you a brief introduction of the Sheikh for those of you who don't know him. Sheikh Salam Al Amri is from the United Arab Emirates. He is a computer engineer by profession, however, has spent a major part of his youth studying under different scholars. He has taken the effort to obtain knowledge of the different sciences of Islam, including Aqidah, Usul, of Hadith, Asul al Fiqh, Usul al Tafsir, and the Arabic language, and more. His teachers are truly are too many to number. I'll mention just a few of them, inshallah, Allah permitting. His teachers include Sheikh Ali Al Kashan and Sheikh Mahmoud Atiya, who were two of the first students of Sheikh Al Bani, and under both Sheikh Salim studied Aqidah. Sheikh Abdul Bari Al Salafi, he studied Hadith. From Sheikh Hamid bin Aqil, judge from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, he studied the fiqh of Bulugha Maram. Sheikh Saad al Shalabi, judge from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, he studied inheritance. From Sheikh Mustafa Maki al Azhari, he studied fiqh. From Sheikh al Maimoni al Maghrabi, a judge from Morocco, he studied the Arabic language, and many other sheikhs, inshallah. With no further ado, I present to you Sheikh Salam al Amri with the subject The Long Awaited Visitor, Death. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina. Innahu man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة my dear brothers and sisters, our topic for today is the long-awaited visitor. There is a visitor who already started his journey and whose arrival is due. He can arrive at any time. This visitor needs no visa needs no permission none can stop him and yet many of us unfortunately are not ready to receive him though his coming is inevitable he will visit every one of us every son of adam will be visited by him I'm sure you have known him. Yes, death. The reality that no human being can escape. Death by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
manifests his attributes that he is al hayyul qayyum the ever living kullu shay'in halikun illa wajha everything is going to perish everything is going to come to an end except allah except his face subhanahu wa ta'ala so yes my dear brothers and sisters will be discussing this important issue to today inshallah and i want to just go quickly through the points inshallah which i intend to discuss with you today number 1 what is death definition of death number 2 how does it happen number 3 why should it happen number 4 how does he take our souls and then when this will happen and how does it feel and what will happen to our souls can we escape death and then signs of good ending causes behind bad ending and signs of bad ending may allah azza wa jal put baraka on our time and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to address this topic death what's the definition of death as we know my dear brothers and sisters a human being is made of two main components body and soul that what makes you o oh, son of adam body and soul they make a human being so death is when this soul leaves this body this physical body goes back to its initial state you know my dear brothers and sisters when allah created our father adam he created him from water he created him from earth he created him from mud stinky mud baked clay these are actually the different phases of the creation which is a process none of us witnessed are you following brothers and sisters this is a process none of us witnessed the process of creating adam alayhi salam but allah shows us the reverse of the process the reverse of life which is death adam from water yes water when it is mixed with the earth it becomes mud clean if you leave it it stinks when you shave it and you leave it to dry it becomes like baked clay that what happened in the jannah the last thing happened was the soul the spirit was breathed into the body this is the creation death is the opposite the last thing entered the body will be the first thing to leave the body what is the last thing entered the body the soul it is exactly the process but in the reverse mode what was last will be first leave for last and first out okay so now the soul will leave the body that is the death so the moment this soul leaves the body that is the definition of death because the soul leaves the body every night as a matter of fact we die every night the soul every night goes to allah some they return some allah holds them that's why the moment you open your eyes in the morning what do you say what is the dua you say alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayh an nushur our praise is due to allah who gave life to us after death so we were dead and some of us will not get up in the morning by the way that's why make it a habit when you go to sleep clear your heart press the button reset the heart 
don't hold any grudge or malice against any Muslim because you might die. You will never get up in the morning. So think of that always. My uncle, Rahimahullah, in the morning, his wife was waking him up for the Fajr. He was next to his wife. He was dead. Even his wife did not feel him when he died. Yes, my dear brothers, we are completely intoxicated in this life. We are drunk with this love, blind love of dunya. What preoccupies our minds is only the love of this dunya, the despicable thing. Dunya, the low thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole dunya doesn't weigh in the sight of Allah the weight of the mosquito wing. The whole dunya. And we are competing and envying each other, fighting each other for this world, the dunya. So the dunya is the one that preoccupies our minds. We hardly remember death. We don't remind each other about death. We don't do that. And if we are in a gathering and someone mentions death, we turn to him and say, don't spoil the mood. Don't remind us about death. Though the remembrance of death is very, very, very beneficial. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Akthiru min dhikri This is the advice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Always keep remembering death. Always. Because there are a lot and many benefits in remembering death all the time. What will stop you from committing a sin? Death. When your nafs tells you, wow, look at this beautiful lady. Do this. Watch this dirty movie. Go to this dirty site. What will stop you from that? The fear of Allah. What if I die while I am watching dirty stuff? Do you want to die like that? So the remembrance of death, remembering death, it stops you from doing evil deeds. So always keep your mind preoccupied with the remembrance of death. The remembrance of death softens the heart. It softens what? The heart. If your heart is hard, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what? Go and visit cemeteries. Go and visit the graveyard. Why? Because it will remind you of the second life. The remembrance of death, if you are in difficulty and you remember death, that hardship becomes easy. You say, Alhamdulillah, it's only a matter of years and we will leave this world. So there are many, many benefits in the remembrance of death. So my dear brothers and sisters, the definition of death is the complete Total separation of the soul from the body. Total separation. Total departure. Because the soul leaves every night, but not totally. There is the link between the soul and the body. That's why you remain breathing. But when you die, the soul leaves the body totally. So that's the definition. The definition of death is not the death of the brain. Because some people... This is something called clinical death. When the brain is dead, they say he is dead in the ICU. No, he's not dead. As long as he breathes normally, without the machines, he is alive. We cannot say that he is dead. Because the definition of death is when the soul leaves the body totally. How does it happen? We don't know. Yes, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides that so and so should die, he dies. And he commands this soul to leave. That's why the issue of the ruh belongs to Allah. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ الرُّوحِ قُلُ الرُّوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي وَمَا أُتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا So they ask you about the soul. Say the knowledge of the soul belongs exclusively to Allah. 
No one knows. Anyone who says the soul is like this, like that, he will be speculating, guessing. Because eh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not tell us about that. So our knowledge should be confined to what Allah said about it. Either in the Quran or in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet But at the process of dying, when a person is breathing his last, the angel of death comes. The angel of death comes and he addresses the soul. The soul is here in the body. We don't know which part of the body, but it is in the body. And he starts to treat it. And subhanallah, the beginning of the death or the dying, when a person is dying, numbness. The organs start to feel cold. Legs become cold. And you can feel it. You can see that now this part is cold, this part of cold, and it goes up and up and up and up until it comes out. Because at that moment, it is the angel of death who is trying to take this soul out. May Allah make our deaths easy. Amen. Because he is going to address the soul. Ya ayyatuhan nafsil mutma'inna. Oh you reassured soul. Come out, come. Which means the soul understands. Because the soul according to Kitab and Sunnah, it is something material, something tangible. So the angel talks to the soul and the soul of the mu'min will flow easily. May Allah make our death that easy. Amen. And the soul of the kafir and the soul of the hypocrite, when the angel of death says, come out, it scatters in the body. But the angel of death will trace it and catch it and pull it out. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, it will be like if you have wet wool and there is in this wet wool, there is a thorn and you try to pull out the thorn, which has sharp in, uh, spokes, what will happen? It will remove part of the wool. That's how the soul of the kafir and the hypocrite will be pulled out. So when the soul comes from the body, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the sight will follow it. Which means, as some of the ulama say, might come out through the mouth, because the sight will be doing like this. So the soul is going up. Going where? Up to whom? So where is Allah? Where is Allah? Up. So the soul goes to the Creator, goes to Allah, Al Kabir Al Muta'al, Al Rahman Al Al Arsh Istawa. That's what the soul goes to Allah. The soul doesn't go to the right or the left, goes to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, why should we die? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who brought us into being. And who created us for a wisdom, divine wisdom, for sure. And that divine wisdom is to worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So life is a test. Allah created us to be tested. And Allah cannot be questioned. And I really feel very sad when I hear some questions of Muslims. They ask about the wisdom. Why Allah said this? Explain to me this. First of all, we have to admit that we have our own limitations and Allah cannot be questioned. Who are we to ask to question Allah? Who are we to question Allah? When subhanallah, in our daily life, when I go to a doctor and he prescribes for me, describes for me a prescription, medicine, I just take it and take it to the pharmacy. I don't argue with the doctor. Do you argue? You don't argue with the doctor because the doctor knows after he diagnoses your disease, he knows that this is the proper medicine for you. You don't argue. And if you argue, if you say, Doctor, why did you give me this medicine? What will happen? What will happen? He will look at you. Stare at you. Are you a doctor? 
That he will ask you, are you a doctor? Oh, sorry, sir, sorry, sorry. You don't argue, you accept. And you argue with Allah Azza wa Jal. Who created the doctor? And who created you? And who created everyone? So the issue of the Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, that when Allah says something, we say what? We hear and we obey. Sami'na wa ata'na. That's the Iman. And don't try for everything to give scientific explanation. Everything. Not, not everything can be explained. Why the prayers are five prayers, not six prayers? Why Fajr two rak'ah? Why Maghrib three? The less than endless. So the most important thing is the Iman. This is what the Creator said. Then these scientific explanations and all this stuff, they just come as a byproduct. What we have to emphasize upon is the Iman. We have to strengthen the seed of Iman and the tree of Iman in our hearts, my dear brothers and sisters. So that is the difference between us and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the moment they hear Allah says something, finish, that's it. Amr ibn al-Jamuh, he was eating few dates in his hand. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what stops me from the entering the Jannah? He said, what you have in your hand? He threw the dates and he said, it's a long life to stay until I finish my dates. And he entered the battlefield and he died. That's it. And as Ibn another, he said, by Allah, I smell the fragrance of the Jannah. The Iman. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he sent one of the Sahaba, Yulaybib, and Yulaybib radiallahu anhu was not handsome, by the way. And he told him, go to the family. He mentioned the name of the family in Medina, Ansar, and tell them Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa tells you to get me married. And the parents said, he didn't find anyone else except you. The girl heard them from behind the curtain. And she said, what are you discussing? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa chose him for me. And you are discussing the issue? Accept him. This is the Iman. This is the Iman. Finish. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he chose this. Don't you know, my dear brothers and sisters, that we contradict ourselves? We say he is Rasulullah. And then when we read his hadith, oh, 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 it doesn't make sense. I'm not convinced. What is this? And you admit he is Rasulullah. And then when you come across the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, imagine you are in front of him. He's in front of you and he's commanding you. Will you say, oh, Prophet, I still have some reservations. Will you say that? So that is the Iman, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Blessed is bihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Blessed is Allah, azza wa jal, who has the kingdom in his hand, the dominion in his hand. He created death and life to test you. That's the purpose. You will be tested. And subhanallah, just today, I was reading a book, and in that book, Imam al-Hassan al-Basri says something beautiful. He said, son of Adam by nature is arrogant. This is the nature of children of Adam. Son of man is arrogant by nature. And what brings him down to earth, what will bring you down to earth and remove that arrogance? Three things. Number one, death. Death bring you down. Fir'aun. Fahashara fanada. Faqala ana rabbukum al-a'la. Fir'aun. I am your supreme lord. That's what he said. What happened to him in the sea when he was drowning? He was crying to Allah. And Jibreel was stuffing his mouth with the mud. Jibreel hates him too much. And Jibreel was afraid that Fir'aun might say, I believe in the oneness of Allah. So Fir'aun, the last minute, he said, I believe 
in the Lord of Bani Israel. So Allah saved his body. That one supreme Lord now is on the beach, on the coast. Rotten corpse. Go to Egypt and you'll see Fir'aun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved his body. Why? As a sign for all the Fir'auns in the pipeline. There are many Fir'auns in the pipeline. All those who follow the footsteps of Fir'aun, Fir'aun is an example for them. That's the wisdom. So what brings you down to earth is death. That's what Imam Hassan Basri said. The second thing he said, sickness. When you fall sick, you turn to Allah. Oh Allah, Aghfirli. Oh Allah, now you cry to Allah when you are sick. The moment you recover, you forget Allah. And the third thing he said, poverty, faqr. So this is the wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes, what will bring you to him is only sickness. Because you are arrogant. So Allah makes you fall sick. So you repent and turn to Allah. Sometimes you are arrogant because of your wealth. Overnight you become bankrupt. In the morning you lost everything in the stock market. Finish. Bankrupt. And we know cases. And the ICUs are full of them. In the ICUs. Overnight. Bankrupt. So this is the wisdom. So Allah has many ways to bring us to Him. To bring us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is all wise so we will die because life is a test how does the soul taken we mentioned that who takes the soul is the angel of death and his name is the angel of death because it is common among some muslims that his name is what israel no his name is the angel of death when will death happen no one knows except Allah. But they are signs. They are what? Signs. Among the signs, do you see them? Do you see this? Gray hairs? This is a sign from Allah. nadir. The warning has arrived. You have gray hair. What are you waiting? And some of us, they start to die until they die. You know dying? Don't think you can become young again. So these are warnings from Allah. Your sight is weak. You use these glasses. That's a sign. Use a stick. That's a sign. Your back started to bend. That's a sign. So the signs are there. Allah sent signals to us to wake up. That the visitor is very near, is getting closer. And yet, many of us, they are in their 50s, in their 60s, and they still think that they will live forever. They think that that. One of our Mashaykh will say this quickly. He said in one of the talks to us, he said, well, today we'll do feasibility study for the, our life, life span. He said, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the average of the son of man is 60 years. So we want to make a visibility study how to invest our life span properly. He said, take out of the 60 years, 15 years, because that is childhood. Right? True or not? Before reaching the age of puberty. Help me with the arithmetics. What remained? 45 years. Right? How many hours you sleep per day? Eight hours every, right? That is one third of the 24 years, of the 24 hours. So one third of 45, how much? 15 years, 15 years and 15 years, how many? 30 years gone. What remained? 30 years. How many hours you work per day? Eight hours. One third of 30, how many? 10 years, what remained? 20 years. How many hours for eating and drinking? Help me. I don't want you to laugh. I want you to cry. 20 years left. Only. 
20 years. How many years for eating and drinking? Five years? What remained? 15 years. How many years for social gatherings and entertainment? And tell me, give a figure quickly, please, brothers and sisters. Five years? What remained? Subhanallah. Allah has given you 60 years to worship Him. 60 years. And only 10 years are they for the ibadah? If we are now in our 50s, in our 60s, what are we waiting? What are we waiting for? We have to dedicate our, our lifetime for the ibadah. Getting ready for death. We are absolutely absorbed into this life. And this visitor will knock the door any time. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to shed light upon signs of good ending. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end our life in a way that pleases Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us our faults and mistakes. Among the sign of good ending is the shahada. A person dies while pronouncing the shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and he dies, or she dies. So this is a good sign. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man kana akhiru kalamihi, la ilaha illallah, dakhala al-jannah. If the last words that come out of your mouth, the kalima, the shahada, alhamdulillah. That's why the scholars, they say, when a person is dying, and he says the kalima, then we keep quiet. If he starts to talk again, we remind him again to say the kalima. So we want him, we want the last words came from his mouth, the kalima. And if we feel that he is dying and he is not saying it, we dictate it to him. We tell him, say la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. That is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, laqinu mawtakum. La ilaha illallah. And here it means, لَقْتُنُ mawtakum Dictate to the dead or dying people. Insha'Allah. Dictate to the dying people. The kalima. La ilaha illallah. Not dictate to them when they are already dead. You know this? In some Muslim countries, the moment they put the body into the grave, you have this habit in this continent, in India. In some Muslim countries, when they lower the body to the grave, someone will come down and he will say, Ya Fulan ibn Fulana, Sa'atika malakan, fala yukhifanak, wala yurhibanak, inna mahma khalq min khalq Allah, yas'ala. A long song. This man will come down and he will dictate to you. Two angels are oh so and so. First of all, he will say, Oh son of so and so, and he will mention your mother's name, not your father's name. You know why? Because they say, how can we be sure that he is the son of his father? But we are sure that he is the son of his mother. That's number one. So they come down and he will tell you, two angels are going to come. If they ask you, who's your Lord? Say, my Lord is Allah. My prophet is Muhammad. My religion is Islam. That doesn't help. If you are not living your life according to what Allah said and what his prophet ﷺ said, you will not be able to to answer the questions in the grave. You will not be able to do that. You will not. So this is a bid'ah. This is an innovation. This is not the meaning of the hadith of Prophet Muhammad when he said, لَقِّنُوا مَوْتَا So the, the first sign of good ending is saying the shahada and then you die. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, when he was dying, his son was telling him, Oh my father, say la ilaha illallah. He was saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. So his son said, what is wrong with you, my dad? He said, my son, this is the shaitan sitting near my head, biting his finger. And he is saying, oh, Ahmed, you escaped. And I'm telling him, not yet until I die. Then I will be only sure that I escaped of your evil. So this is even the shaitan. The shaitan receives you when you enter the dunya by hitting your navel. And he will be with you throughout your life. And he will not leave you even when you are dying. That is the shaitan.
The second sign of good ending is sweating, to sweat when you are dying. Not to sweat because of the electricity. Huh? No, you sweat because something is happening in this body. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the forehead will be sweating, the forehead. So that is a good sign. Also among the good signs, plague, ta'oon. If this disease breaks in a country and you died because of that disease, the plague, then also that's a good ending. Ya shaheed. Drowning is a good sign because that is shaheed. Abdominal, abdominal disease, any disease inside the abdomen, that is a good sign. If you die because the roof fell on you, something collapsed on top of you, that is also a good sign. All these are mentioned in the authentic hadith. A woman dying in the labor while delivering her baby, childbirth, she's shahida, she's a martyr, that's a good sign. If you die in the battlefield protecting your deen, that's a good sign. If you die protecting your own property, that's a good sign. If you die on the frontier, ribat, defending the border of the Muslim land, that is a good sign. Also, if you fall off a cliff, that's also one of the good signs. If you are killed by a dictator or a tyrant because you stood in front of him and you told the truth, that's a good sign. And you are a shaheed. And who's the best shaheed? The best shaheed is the one who will be killed by the Dajjal. That boy who will come from Medina and who will meet the Dajjal and who will say, you are the Dajjal. And the Dajjal will kill him, the Antichrist. And then the Dajjal try to bring him back to life and he will come back to life. And then the Dajjal tries to kill him again. The moment he brings him to life, the man, the young man will say, now I am 100% sure that you are the Dajjal. You are the Dajjal. Also among the good signs, dying in Medina. Dying where? In Medina. So if you die in Medina, that's a good sign. Now we'll go to the bad endings. Causes behind bad endings. Why people, they have bad endings. Number one, there are certain causes behind that. Number one, wrong belief. Wrong aqeedah. Your doctrine is incorrect. So if you hold in your heart the wrong belief, then this is one of the main causes that your life will be ended in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. So the most important thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is to correct your belief. Correct your aqeedah. Study the right, the correct belief, the belief of the Sahaba. The belief according to Kitab and Sunnah. Not the belief according to Aristotle, Socrates, Plato. Especially when it comes to the issue of the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah. Many Muslims today, they don't believe in the, all the names of Allah and their meanings. Do you know this? There are schools holding that belief. They don't accept all the meanings of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. They don't accept that Allah is a Rahman ala al arsh istawa. So if you hold the wrong belief in your heart, this is one of the root causes of bad ending. So you need to correct your belief, number one. And the belief based on the Quran and Sunnah. Based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and the Quran. And the understanding of the Sahaba, Ridwan Allah alayhim. Number two, the nifaq, hypocrisy. If you are showing that you are a mu'min, but in reality you are concealing the disbelief. You reveal something, you show something, and you conceal the opposite. We treat you as a Muslim. Islam commands us that we treat you as a Muslim. But Allah knows your reality. Allah knows your reality. So you cannot hide that. So the truth will come when you are dying. 
and you'll not be able to say it. Also, the love of dunya is another cause. Love of dunya. If the dunya is preoccupying your heart and your mind, then that will be a sign of bad ending. Also, if you live and shun righteousness, you don't lead a righteous life. And you don't like and you don't love the righteous. You don't love the practicing people. You don't like them. So that is also another sign. Also among the causes of bad ending, that clinging and attaching our hearts to other than Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, and I'm talking to myself, our hearts should be attached to Allah, should be clung to Allah. If this heart is linked with Allah, then you will fear none but Allah. You will fear none but Allah. Unfortunately, I say it, unfortunately many of us, they fear human beings more than Allah. They fear human beings more than Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear them not, but fear me if you are a true believers. If you are a true believers, fear them not, but fear me, because I will be your protector. Also, among the root causes, the issue of procrastination. We procrastinate. What do you mean by procrastination? Procrastination means I will do it tomorrow. Next year, inshallah, I will go to Hajj next year. As if he received a guarantee from Allah, he received a guarantee from Allah that he will live until next year. Though he's able to buy the ticket and go. So never procrastinate. Ibn Umar, he said, the Prophet and Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, held me by my shoulders. And he said, win. The day when the sun rises, don't expect to live until the sun sets. And when the sun sets, don't expect that you will live until the second day. This is how we should be in life. Not that we are procrastinating. I will repent later. Young men, they say, now, you know, let us have fun and all that stuff. And then we will make tawbah, we'll go and make umrah or something. They say, I will be a good Muslim after getting married. Young people, they say that. After getting married, inshallah, I will be mullah, maulana. I will be, mashallah, sheikh. So don't procrastinate. Go to the graveyard and see the graves. How old was he? Infant, two years. How old was he? 12, 15, 20, 30. You can die anytime. So never, never procrastinate. Signs of bad endings. May Allah save us from having bad endings. Amen. Among the signs of bad endings that you feel you are safe, as if the Jannah is guaranteed to you. Subhanallah. Amin makrullah. You feel you are safe? When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq said, if one of my feet, if the first foot is inside the Jannah and the second out, I cannot be sure that I will enter the Jannah. This is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Umar ibn Khattab used to come to Hudayfa, who has the list of the hypocrites. And he would say to Hudayfa, By Allah, is my name in the list? Allahu Akbar. Who are we? Who are we? This is Umar ibn Khattab. This is Umar ibn Khattab. He is asking Hudayfa if his name is included in the list of the Munafiqeen. Also among the signs, refusing the Kalima. Many people, many Muslims, they died, they died. And when people were telling them, say, La ilaha illallah, they refused. They were turning their heads. Also among the signs, to die while committing sins. I'll just mention this. In our land, Arab land. A man died on the stage holding his musical instrument, holding his guitar, and he died. This is how Allah ended his life. And this is a message for those brothers whom the shaitan tempted them to fall into this 
symphonists, music. Do you want to die holding your guitar? I'm sure no Muslim wants to die like that. No Muslim. Every Muslim wants to die saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And take this example, another example, 190 degree different, totally different. Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk, Rahimahullah, from Egypt. He died on Friday in the Salah, in the Sujood, in the Sujood, prostrating on Friday. That's how he died. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us our sins. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and your deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end our life in a way that pleases him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on the straight path till we meet him. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Zakallah khair. Sheikh al -Abri. We will now open the question and answers from our audience. In order to do so in an adequate manner for all those present here today, with the time which we have available, we would like to follow some guidelines during this question and answer session. Please keep your questions on the topic at hand, which is the long-awaited visitor, death. Questions not relevant to the topic, including any general questions on religion, will not be allowed. Kindly state your question briefly and to the point. Only one question at a time may be asked. For your second question, please go to the back of the line or wait your turn. When you come back to the front, you may ask a second question, time permitting. Non-Muslims, brothers and sisters will be given first preference to ask their questions. Kindly state your name and your profession before putting forth your questions. We'll begin with a question from the front, the gentleman with the red scarf. Assalamu alaikum. I am Ludovic Bonilla. I am actually traveling in India. And uh, my question is, uh, there is a fact that human beings used to um, uh, follow different spiritual ways, religion or, or other ways, uh, to face their own death. So, uh, in Islam, it's, uh, I, I think, uh, being pious and uh, leading his life in, a, in, a, in the way of Allah, uh, and by that way we can hope uh, going to Jannah. But others, human beings, are not Muslim, and uh, they follow different, their own religion or their own ways, um, spiritual ways, and some practice meditation to face the moment of, of death. And so I just want your opinion about uh, this, um, these people, these ways. Okay. See, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is something we have to make it clear. The way of salvation is the way of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Anyone who does not follow the way of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, he is not treading upon the right path of salvation. So if you want really the right path and the tariq and the way of the correct salvation, the way that will take you to the Jannah, is follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the example. You want tazkiyah? You want purification of your soul? It is there in the kitab and sunnah, and only kitab and sunnah. And that's how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought up the Sahaba upon the Qur'an and Sunnah. And we don't want our Iman to be better than the Iman of the Sahaba because that is impossible. We just hope and cry to Allah to gather us with them, insha'Allah. So follow their footsteps. Kitab and Sunnah, anything else, don't accept it. Any way, any technique differs from the Kitab and Sunnah, it will take you astray. And I just mentioned this hadith which is in Sunan Imam Darimi. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he entered the masjid, and he find a gathering in the masjid. And each circle, there is a pile of pebbles, stones, small stones. And in each circle, there is a sheikh telling them, say Subhanallah 100 times. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Say Alhamdulillah 100 times. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, etc. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari immediately he reported this, to Ibn Mas'ud. 
Ibn Mas'ud, he did like this. He covered his face and he went to them. And he said what? مَا أَسْرَعْ هَلَكَتْكُمْ يَا أُمَّةْ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ How quickly, O followers of Muhammad, you perish. هَذِهِ مَلَابِسْ نَبِيُّكُمْ لَمْ تَبْلَى The clothes of your prophet, they haven't become shabby yet. وَهَذِهِ أَوَانِيهِ لَمْ تُكَسَّرْ And these his utensils are still intact. فَوَاللَّهِ By Allah. إِمَّا أَن تَكُونُ عَلَى مِلَّةِ he ahda min millat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah. Either you are in a way or deen better than the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or muftatihi bab dalala, you are opening the door of misguidance. Choose. Is your way better than the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. So, you are opening the door of misguidance. They said, you know Abu Abdurrahman, you know Father Abu Abdurrahman, our intention is good. He said, that will not help. So follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anyone comes and tell you do this, tell him, did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do it? He said yes. Show me. If he said no, said sorry. Anything the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do, I will not do. I'm not ready to do it. I am just follow his footsteps, and may Allah make us among those who follow his footsteps. Allahu akbar. We'll now take a question from the gentleman in the. Back. I am Advocate Prashant Magu here. I have heard your speech just now. In your speech you had mentioned that the Allah says that you fear none, but you fear only me. Am I correct on that part? Now what I, my question is that why does the Allah say so? Don't you feel by saying so, he inculcates a part of terror in the minds of the people who don't follow or who don't follow his path. This is my question. Okay. Yes, Allah is calling us to fear only Him. But fear, fearing Allah, is positive fear. A fear that brings about righteousness, brings about piety brings about humility. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً For the one who fears Allah, there are two gardens for him in the Jannah. So this is the positive fear that brings you closer to Allah. And fear, my dear friend, is classified in different categories. One type of fear is prohibited. It is unlawful. You should not fear an idol. You should not fear a grave. What the idol can do? Nothing. That is form of fear is shirk. And there is another form of fear, which is ibadah, act of worship. And that is to fear Allah. And to do the do's and avoid the don'ts. And there is another category of fear, which is the permissible fear, natural fear. And that is to fear something like fire, wild animals. This is something instinctive, natural, built within us. Like Musa alayhi salam. فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفًا يَتَرَكَّبُ Moses, after he killed that man, when he pushed the man and he fell dead. The second day, he was turning, moving around. He was afraid. So that is natural fear. That is natural fear. And there is another type of fear which is haram. And that is to fear a human being. For instance, you fear your boss. So he invites you to a party where there is alcohol. Okay? So you attend this party. Or you do something haram. So this type of fear is prohibited. You should not do this. Because fear is an act of worship, ibadah. And we have to single Allah Azza wa Jal with that particular quality. Fearing only Allah and Allah only. Go ahead. My question is unanswered. Because as you said that haram, a man fearing his boss. So he should not fear. 
similarly then why he should fear the almighty allah the fear element remains if he is fearing his boss definitely he will fear the allah also on the contrary what i feel is that it should have been the allah sh- should say and might i think it might be saying also that you should love me you should follow my path but by saying so that you follow my path by means of fear that does not uh, uh, come into the uh, ambit of uh, the almighty okay now i got a question you see my dear friend we worship allah and we fly to allah with two wings the wing of fear and the wing of hope and that how we balance our flight to the next life it's not only fear in the history of islam there is a group who worshiped allah only because they fear allah and they are known as the khawarij they don't know allah is merciful and there's another group who said allah is the most kind the most merciful and they said and those are called murji'ah and they said the iman of alcoholic and the iman of the adulterer and the fornicator is like the iman of abu bakr as-siddiq two extremes and the right path that we worship allah out of fear and out of love and when we are dying we only think good about allah we think good about allah and we hope of his mercy and allah azza wa jal he created listen to this allah created 100 rahma 100 mercy and he sent down to earth one hundredth and because of this one hundredth we show kindness and mercy towards each other and because of this 100th part of mercy the mare the mare the animal lifts up its hoof lest that it steps over its babe because of this 100th part of rahma and 99 rahma he kept with himself till the day of resurrection where he will shower his mercy upon all mankind so allah is the most kind he is kind to us more than our mothers not only this my dear friend allah descends every night in a manner suits his divinity and he asks anyone wants me to forgive him and he wants me to grant him sustenance anyone needs anything every day allah rejoices allah becomes happy when we turn to him in repentance more than one who lost his she camel that has all his sustenance on top of the camel and he slept and when he got up he found his camel and he said out of happiness oh allah you are my slave and i am your lord allah rejoices and becomes happy happier more than this person that's the mercy in islam that's the concept of islam may allah guide all of us amen thank you sir for your precious lecture my name is mahesh maske i am a teacher by profession sir uh, you said that uh, we are the sons of uh, adam and uh, adam father adam was created by allah why what is the purpose behind creation of adam can i know this so that i can know the purpose of my very life so what do you want to know about the creation of adam i want to know why did allah create adam so that i can know the purpose of life so you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he told us that he cannot be questioned okay because he is the all wise the all wise so he does whatever he wants to do in his kingdom so he created us and he told us why he created us the question should be first of all what is the purpose of the creation you are created you should ask yourself this question how did i come into being have you asked yourself this question how did you come into being who created you what did he want from you and once you get the answers to these questions then you follow what he says assume that you are hungry and then you found a table full of food under a tree and you start eating after that you will ask yourself who put this table here right true or not will you ask or you will not ask what sir i could not get you are hungry hmm. 
And then you found a table full of food and you start eating in a remote area. After finish eating, you will start to wonder who put this or who brought this table. Yeah. Look around you and see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided everything for you. Everything serves man. Mother nature serves man because mother nature, my dear friend, is not more than animals, plants and inanimates. That is mother nature. So everything is serving man. So man should ask, what is my purpose here? See this pen has a purpose to write with. Yes. She watch to no time. Everything has a purpose. How about us? What is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? There must be an answer to that question. So Allah who created all mankind, He said, I created you to worship me. To worship me. That is why Allah created us. So that is the real purpose. So we have to work on that and actualize our servitude towards Him who has given us everything. Unless you don't believe in His existence, that is another issue. But assume that you believe in the existence of God, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now a question from the sister side. Sister, would you please state your name and profession? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu I am Mehjabeen Sheikh from Mumbai and I am a student of sociology. Brother, it's a pleasure to talk to you because you are from Arab. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in also Arabi. So I like you very much. So my question is, the people who die in the Mubarak month of Ramadan and unmarried men and women who die before marriage, are these people called Shuhda? Will they go directly go to heaven? Please. Alhamdulillah. First of all, the belief of Ahl Sunnah, we don't testify and say so and so will go to Jannah or so and so will go to hell. This is, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if someone dies and insha'Allah these signs we mentioned are fulfilled, we hope insha'Allah that he is going to be in the Jannah. But we cannot say so and so is in Jannah or so and so in the hellfire. That is not our business. The Jannah, hell, heaven belongs to him. We only say so and so is in the Jannah if he told us. Like Prophet Muhammad said, Abu Bakr in Jannah, Umar in Jannah, Uthman in Jannah, Ali in Jannah, Sa'ad in Jannah, Talha. So those who the Prophet ﷺ told us, we say, yes, they are in the Jannah. But any part from that, anyone who says so and so will be in the Jannah, or so and so is shaheed. It is wrong. How can you say he is shaheed? Insha'Allah he is shaheed. Because we know the shuhada are in the Jannah. So we pray if someone dies like a woman in labor and things like that, or someone died drowning, we hope inshallah, inshallah Allah Azza wa Jal will accept them inshallah and shower his mercy in them. Ameen. Jazakallah. Gentlemen in the front. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sartaj Ahmed and I belong to a delegation. The name is Islamic Peace Foundation coming from Kanpur, India. And uh, I'm... My pers I am personally related with the exports business there in my city. My question is that the human being is the composition of two things or three. One is body, second one is soul, a third one is nafs. And again, it is related with the same thing that who will be punished hereafter? This is a good question. Thank you. Is it soul and body or there is a third element there which is the nafs? You see, first of all, there is a one complete lecture I gave on the soul. So go and watch it. That's what I recommend, first of all. Second thing, the, what is nafs? Nafs, it is the combination of the two. The body and the soul. So the body and the soul is the nafs. Is this clear to you? Yes. Very so the body and the soul is the nafs. So mainly it is the body which is the material part and the soul which is that which gives the life when it is entered into the body. Which one will be punished in this life? The body receives in this life. Yeah. Okay. For instance, in the sleep, the soul in the body? Tell me. 
body in this life, of course, the body. Okay, so in the sleep, the soul is not in the body. And you have a nightmare and you get up sweating, right? So it is the body that feels the pain and the soul is with Allah. In the grave, the barzakh, it is the soul and the body. Though it, in, the, in the grave, the body was, the ribs as in the hadith, they uh, into, uh, go into uh, each other and the soul is not there. But there is a link as Imam Ibn Qayyim said. And in the Jannah or in heaven, both of them. So they are different phases as Imam Ibn Qayyim explained that Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Is this clear to you brother? Yes, very clear. Jazakumullah khairan wa ahsan Thank you for your question and that will be the last question for this session. I thank Shaykh Al-Amri. Yeah, we've concluded our time inshallah.